Hi, I'm Kim, the lab manager here at Cypress Point. I'm going to talk to you guys um, a little bit about blood banking, how to do an order, how long the order is good for, how long the sample is good for, what do you do when you want to get a unit. So we're going to go over all that and hopefully um, you guys will totally understand it. If not, you can always call us and ask us. We're here and available for you guys. Um, okay, first things ordering. You're going to go into the computer under that patient's account number and you're going to do a blood bank order. That's going to be on your um, 22 most common labs. It's going to pop up for you. I think it's on the right hand side of the screen. It's then going to prompt you for some questions. Um, you're going to enter, the first thing it's going to ask you is what is the what is the physician's order? Did he order a type and screen? Did he order a type and match? You're going to answer that the best you can. So you're either going to put TS or TM. Those are the only two choices that you should be putting in that box. Um, if you put the next on the next question, it's going to ask you what do you want? You want two RBCs. If you're ordering a type and match, then you should be telling me in the second line what do you want? What kind of products? Maybe the doctor wants FFP. Maybe he wants platelets. So you tell me how many and then what type. As opposed to if you're asking for a type and screen, you should be putting none right there. N O N E or zero or nothing or whatever. If you put type and screen and then you tell me that you want two units of red cells, I'm going to be very confused and I'm going to be calling you. So you want to avoid my phone calls, answer correctly, and the best you can. If you have questions, call us. Um, the third question is going to ask you about the patient's um, pregnancy history. And the fourth question is going to be about transfusion history. You want to answer these as accurately as you can. Go to the patient, ask them. This is crucial. Um, as long as the patient's immunological status ha doesn't change or stays the same, then we can use that sample that you're going to be drawn for up to two weeks. If the patient has been transfused or pregnant in the last three months, the sample is only good for three days. So that is very important. A patient's immunological status, as long as it hasn't changed in the last three months, that sample is good for two weeks. I want to make sure that you guys understand how important that is. So once you do all that, you're going to go ahead and collect your specimen. You're going to collect it in a pink top. You want to follow all the gu guidelines we talked about earlier about, pretend that's a pink top, about drawing your sample. Make sure you use the chart label, date, time, your initials. If there's no date, time, and your initials on this, I'm going to throw it away and ask you to redraw it. So please make sure that you put this information on there. Specimens that aren't labeled will, will be rejected, no exceptions whatsoever, especially on blood banks. It's just there's too many things that can go wrong. So again, like I said, the specimens are going to be good for 14 days unless the patient has been transfused or pregnant in the last three months. Um, if they have been, um, it's only going to be valid for three days. So if you're ordering it for a cross match in four days and your patient was pregnant two months ago, it ain't going to be any good. So you want to make sure that you're within that time, that two-week time frame, or, like I said, transfusion or pregnancy history, three days. Okay, unit requests. So how do you get a unit once you know you ordered your blood bank, you sent your sample, I call you and say, hey, units are ready. What do you do? Okay, you should have some of these on your unit, wherever you're at, surgery, pack you, on the floor. But this is a unit request. So you're going to take one of your patient labels. Put it here. Like that. And then you're going to put, say for this patient, I'm going to get one unit of red cells. Date. Time. So one unit of RBCs, not one of two, so we get that a lot, not, one, not two of two, tell me what you want, one unit of RBCs or platelets or FFP, date, time, and this is going to be you, this is not the doctor. I know who the doctor is, but whose name's on the label. This is going to be you down here. You're the person who's going to be picking up the, up the unit, okay? So when you come to the lab and bring that to us, we're going to go to our book. We're going to pull, the, pull that out. All right, we have, we have our patient's information here on this side. And we have unit information, and then we have a spot to sign out the unit 
over here, okay? So we, we write in this area when we do the patient's cross match. You do not write in this area, only we do, okay? So what we'll do when you come bring this is we'll pull the, the unit out of the refrigerator, we'll visually inspect the unit, we'll compare the patient's information to the blood bank tag, and to the unit release. That's why it's important to have this. We're gonna check everything. We're gonna check our book to make sure the patient's name, medical record number, date of birth, match what's on the tag that you bring, on the um, request that you bring me. And then I'm also gonna compare it to the tag that's attached to the unit. All three of those places need to match. So that's why you have to bring this to me. I'm also gonna check that the unit number that I've recorded in the book matches the tag attached to the blood and also matches the back of the blood. You want to make sure that everything matches. Um, and we'll probably ask you to help us verify. Like I'm going to call out the unit number and you're going to verify it on the tag. Make sure that you're listening and paying attention because if we do have any mistakes, I don't want you to get out of the lab, get to the patient's bedside and then you're checking it with your second nurse and you discover it's much easier to fix it and correct it before you walk out of the lab with the unit of blood. So if everything matches, You'll be asked to sign that you receive the blood, and I'll show you what that looks like um, down here. So we'll date it, we'll time it. I'm going to sign here. I'm going to say yes, that it's visually okay, and you're going to initial here. Um, if you find any discrepancies, if we find any discrepancies, we'll address them right there and make sure we're doing all this by paper and by hand and we do make mistakes. I might put 7-4 instead of 4-7 for the patient's medical record number. We're gonna have to stop and correct that before we let the unit leave the laboratory. After hours. So, two nurses need to come to the lab to pick up the unit. Do not come to the lab by yourself to verify your unit. You can't do it. Bring someone with you. You're gonna bring the same thing. This unit request, you're going to go to the refrigerator, locate the unit for your patient in the refrigerator. You're going to come to the book. Now remember, I might have 16 units cross-matched in there. Your patient may not be on page one. You may have to flip to page two or even to page three. Sometimes I have 16 or 18 units cross-matched in there at one time. Um, so if your patient's not on the first page, don't write in the book. Just flip to the next page, I'll probably on page two. Um, you want to check everything again. Check the administration tag versus the request versus the book. Both of you check it. One call it out while the other one double checks it. If you find any discrepancy, stop and call us. It, it doesn't matter. I don't care if it's 2 o'clock in the morning. If you find a discrepancy here, you have to stop and call us. <clears throat> Both of you are going to sign that you receive the unit of blood. So just like I showed you before, date it, time it. One nurse signs that they release the unit, yes, it's okay, and the other nurse is going to sign that they accepted the unit. Um, I, I, I put this little thing in here because I keep getting people wanting to write the unit in there in here when they don't find it on page one. So make sure that if you are, if it's you and somebody else, if it's at night and we're not here, that you're only signing in this column right here where it says unit release record. We're going to, the laboratory will fill out this information when we do the cross match. Okay. So that's kind of two scenarios picking up a unit when the laboratory's here and then picking up a unit when we're not here. The third thing is going to be an emergency release. So, middle of the night, your patient's just dropping, going downhill, you need to give two O negs. I haven't seen this really happen, but we have to be prepared for everything. So the first thing you're going to do, if you think that you need to give an, uh, an emergency release unit, you, you don't know your patient's type, you don't know, you don't really know anything, you, they don't have any blood cross match in the refrigerator, the first thing you're going to do is call us you need, immediately. Um, you're going to locate the two ONAG units. They are marked in the refrigerator. They are always there. It doesn't matter if I don't have another unit in the whole laboratory. There will be two O negative units in the refrigerator. You're going to pull two segments off the unit and label them with unit, unit little stickers from the unit. We're going to take a field trip to the lab in just a few minutes and I'll show you all, all what that looks like. You're going to fill out the administration tag from the emergency release packet, which I keep in this book. 
this little packet. It's got instructions on the back that tell you exactly what to do. All right, so you'd, you'd open this. Here's what your tag looks like. Okay. You're going to fill this out following the example. I put an example in here for you guys because I know you're going to be rushed and, you know, I'm going to make it as easy as possible and as explanatory as possible. So you're going to fill that out. Make a copy of this tag. There's a copy machine in the laboratory. Make a copy of it and leave it in the lab. The only time that you will write in this book is if you have an emergency release. So you're going to write the information just, just like you have it on here. And as soon as possible, you want to go ahead and draw a pink top and get it to the laboratory so that we can start. Do it across match and make sure that that blood that that patient's getting is compatible to them. Um, once you finish your units and all that, you're going to return these tags back to me. They need to be complete. And there's only really three things to sign on it. The two, the signature for the two nurses that check the unit at the bedside. And there's also a little check mark just to remind you to make sure that the patient has consent to receive blood. And that's just a double check for you guys to make sure. Also on here we have um, signs and symptoms of a transfusion reaction, which is great. So you can kind of watch out for these things. And they're all on there. So if you think that, you know, your patient's getting any of these it's a good place to go and just double check also we should be handed out um, if a patient's discharged within 48 hours of a transfusion we should be giving them some information on that and um, I believe that you can find that in CPSI under the educational documents it's the same thing that's in here so um, within 48 hours of the transfusion the patient needs to know what to do and what to look for so we, we transfused them yesterday we're discharging them today they need to know what to look for if they're having a transfusion reaction and what to do. So we should be handing out that information as well. Um, okay, let's go take our field trip.